Hello and welcome to another Mr. Beast Bite video and this one's a little bit different insofar as we're looking at a Sony uh, HF950 and uh, this video I actually shot back in July 2020 and I'm only releasing it now, uh, nearly 12 months on. Um, it originally was going to be a series of videos on restoring uh, machine and really doing everything to make sure that it was 100% spot on, ready for its new owner. Uh, but uh, unfortunately I lost some footage right at the beginning um, of the, the process and uh, sort of circumstances, work, whatever got in the way so I didn't do any more to it until now. So this video is basically uh, tips and tricks it details changing the whole effect device as well on the, the head motor. Just a few things to look out for, common failure points, um, a few of them. Um, a few people have said that uh, they're a bit daunted by these machines, having watched my first video on the HF950. Please don't be. It, they really are great machines and they are so worth owning. Um, they're, they're just so unusual and the, when they work they are perfect and quite honestly my process of working through these machines is to get them as perfect as possible and to make them just go on uh, for years if, if possible. So please enjoy the video and uh, quite a few interesting videos in the pipeline actually. I'm doing about five I think. Waiting for parts for most of them to be completed and um, have things, uh, a couple of VHS decks, um, a couple of beta decks coming along as well, and uh, yeah, all sorts. Uh, V2000, I have some Philips V2000 machines uh, in the pipeline to be repaired, uh, including some sort of fairly late separates. Uh, so, yeah, please do like and subscribe and, and uh, keep an eye out, basically, for those videos. So, without further ado, let's crack on. So, in this video, we're going to be looking at the Sony SL HF950, um, which is pretty much an identical deck. Well, in many ways, anyway, obviously, not NTSC as the SLHF 750 um, very much because it has the sled, the drawer um, which I think is an absolutely brilliant design um, but does add an extra level of complexity when you're working on these machines they are starting to get quite old now um, what are they, something like 30 well, over 30 years old anyway, 34 years old maybe. So not surprising really, they're starting to show their age. Um, but they do have a number of faults that are uh, pretty common. Um, you sort those out and they're great machines. So uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to um, actually take out the, um, the whole drum. Um, I've got a problem where the servo isn't working particularly well. I know the electronics is fine. Um, it was doing my head in so much I actually changed the board um, from a, a, another machine with a, a known good board. And um, it's exactly the same problem that's still there. So really, all I can really conclude, especially as all the voltages are correct, everything checks fine. Um, is that there's got to be a problem with the actual um, motor itself. Now I've got a complete drum, so I'm going to just going to change a lot because the heads on the other drum that I've got are actually, if anything, just a tiny bit better than the ones in this, and I want this to be a really nice machine. So, uh, and what I'm going to do as well is change the the four capacitors on the, the motor and also the Hall effect. Might as well while I'm in there. There's nothing wrong with the Hall effects on either drum, but let's do it anyway. So we'll do that. So let's get cracking. 
And as we most of the way through working on this machine, it's um, had quite a few problems. Um, power supply was blown, so uh, I've uh, replaced all the capacitors and the two uh, uh, ICs as well, the um, transistors, switching transistors. So that's, um, that's now working really well. Um, but I then had a problem with the loading motor. Um, the, uh, the actual armature itself was moving far too much in the in the actual motor housing. Um, so in the end, I have actually replaced replaced it from another machine, uh, which is good. Uh, also, the rubber at the end of, of the worm drive had uh, sort of disintegrated, but uh, I'll, sh I'll show you that in a minute. Um, at the moment, the problem I've got now is that it all, when you put a tape in, it will load the tape and then it jams. Um, so basically what happens is it laces the tape and um, laces it round and then it will run through a single phase of temporarily engaging, disengaging the um, pinch roller and Along with that, after a lot of fiddling about, I've worked out that something is sticking here, um, which is causing it to jam when it's going through that phase of temporarily engaging the, uh, the pin roller. So um, I've sort of worked from this end, worked it all the way through, and found out that that's what's jamming it. Um, the Sony manual would have you believe that if you're going to do anything sort of... Uh, majorly uh, mechanical on these, like for example taking this off, you have to take the whole sled out, you don't. Um, as long as the tape is unlaced, you take the loading motor, sort of away, and also the, um, the arm that lifts the, the carriage, away and then there is a little let's put that back up there is a little well I can show you I'll show you on a spare deck there's a little lever that you pull so you pull it right to the end with all of that disengaged and the deck unlaced and you just pull this and then gently pull it out and it will allow you to pull the whole um, sled assembly out um, as far as the wires will, will let you I mean you can see there's quite a bit of slack there and that's usually enough to do most of the, the jobs on this the first one of these I did, I actually did take out the whole lot and it's massive. I mean, there's so many cables and they go to all sorts of different boards and uh, yeah, it's, it's a massive job. So uh, it's a bit of a top tip there really. Um, but uh, just cleaned all of this. I actually had a new um, pendulum uh, idler gear. So I decided to put that on. The old one was actually not too bad, but I thought, well, I've got a brand new one, put that on, makes sense. So, yeah, the next thing I suppose is to work out what's going on. So I've, I've sort of gone through it all, uh, right away from the, the moving sections in here, right the way back through, it all seemed okay, um, but jammed. So I just got my screwdriver, just gave it a little wiggle here and here and suddenly it just moved it just almost like clicked into place and um, yeah suddenly everything started moving it was like it was jammed um, so uh, yeah no way of testing it really not not reliably uh, without sort of getting it all back together and uh, see how it goes so the first thing to do is I'm going to start on this machine um, and then I'm going to move over to the other machine that has the, the drum that's going to go in this machine in. Um, so the top bit 
is from here and this machine. So this bit, I've already removed it. Um, it's just held on with plastic clips and I found the best way to do it is just um, place your fingers sort of like so either side um, and just sort of give it a wiggle and pull fairly firmly and uh, it will just come up. Um, maybe there's a better way to do it, um, but I've found that's fine. I've never broken a clip, he says, famous last words. Um, so yeah, and then the other thing you've got to do is remove this, two screws, out it comes. Now you can actually drive the sled by hand, as you know, um, or as you may know, <laughs> um, when you pack these for shipping, for storage, or moving house or whatever, it's really advisable to lock the sled with the, um, I think this has them, with the three screws that are here. Now if you don't have these screws, you can get away with using um, the case screws from a C6. Um, these I'm not so, so sure if they do reach um, but I know this one is basically, it's, it's identical to a case screw for a C6, and that would go in the back. So the only thing that leaves is obviously if you don't put them in underneath, this will move up and down, so it can damage the plastic rail, which is a bit fragile, or the plastics for the rail, I should say. Um, I've seen quite a few of these where they have little plastic wheels, um, like runners, uh, that the runners run on, rather, and um, I've seen those cracked. So, yeah, it's worth um, it's worth being a bit careful. Um, you can see I've already started <laughs> um, putting out the, the wiring, but I'll show you on the other machine how that all works. And, uh, yeah, so that's the, the top pretty much done. Because it has a static drain for the on the, the guides here, uh, two and three, and that's right. Um, obviously when it's laced, um, you have to take this all off. They're not that bad to set up, to be honest. Um, generally, I, I tend not to like to dis disturb them if I can help it. Because this machine does have the static drain, um, you have no choice. It's got to come off. So I just take out the two screws, move these. Um, obviously there's a bit of varnishy um, stuff sort of gluing this. So I make sure that I separate it, get the um, get this off as well, because this will be stuck to the metal. So everything is clear and I move this out of the way, because the last thing you want is any of this metal floating about, possibly to hit one of the heads as you drop this down, I'll drop this out. So, uh, yeah, it'll all, it'll all make sense as I do this. <laughs> oh, and of course, unplug the, uh, the hi-fi heads uh, connector as well. Uh, nothing worse than finding you've forgotten that when you're sort of holding the, the whole drum in your hand. <laughs> so this is a donor machine. Um, this machine will be up and running again. Um, just basically taking this drum out, um, mainly because I want to get the other machine going and I want to prove to myself that it is a drum fault. Um, and like I said, the heads in, in this machine are just that, that tiny bit younger. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to take this out, um, put it in the other machine. I've got another set of heads, good heads as well, um, that are almost like new. I will, Pair the motor out of the other machine, put those other heads on, put it all together, put it back in this machine. So this machine will then be a really good machine. So, um, first thing is to get gain more access. This is on the bottom of the, the sled. So just one screw. So you then have to remove this assembly. 
Now this one also doesn't have the sled loading, loading uh, motor mechanism in place. Um, I've got to repair on the motor to do. Uh, here is that that uh, assembly. And what's happened to this one is the, um, the rubber's gone really bad. So it's causing this to float about a lot more than it should. And it's causing inaccuracies in the way it's loading and unloading the sled. So yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, see what I can do with that one. I have got others. Actually, I've got, got one out of a machine that I actually scrapped a couple of years ago. <clears throat> so that's, that's probably what will happen there. So you've got three connectors to undo. The first one is the video heads, which with a tiny bit of persuasion, I know I'm putting on the cables, <laughs> it's not ideal, but that will just come undone, so that's fine. Then you have these cables here. and this cable here and it sort of gets a bit buried under the other cables you almost don't have to think of this as a video recorder it's it's quite complex um for a sort of mechanical or sort of physical point of view so these cables are going off there, uh, you see that. So the first one to unplug is this one here. And then we've got the coil feedback, hold the feedback connector, motor feedback connector to unplug. Um, one thing that's worth trying to do as well is trying to not disturb these too much because if you disturb them too much it's difficult to get all the cables at the back here to actually um, sit back properly and it can cause problems when the drawer shuts, they're so messy that the drawer isn't shut properly. So the next one is that feedback, and you can tell it's the feedback one because it's blue. It's got a blue bit of heat shrink on it. And this one is actually wrapped or oh, it's trapped by another connector or another set of cables. because so, the other one wasn't it went over the top so I'm guessing this must have been done by hand in the factory which is pretty amazing really I, mean, I just wonder how much was actually done by hand on these machines in their manufacture um, so very long cable this one So there we go, so there are the cables, so that is now good to go. We'll cut the cable clip, making sure we keep one away from the cables, because I don't fancy having to repair those. So there we go. Now let's push that in a bit. I'll just show you so uh, there you can see the deck what I've done is I've taken off the um, number two and number three guides there's the uh, static drain to chassis there not really very well out of the way Let me 
should be all right. Um, connectors is undone. So yeah, so this can now be dropped out. And the other thing I have done as well, another, another bit of a tip here, is I've undone this nut already. I've undone it in the machine. It's a seven mil. Uh, I've just used a spanner. Uh, probably a box spanner would be better, but you know, I mean, I've, the spanner's done the job. Um, what I've done in this case, because it hasn't got the um, the slots in the top of the the um, shaft that the heads, what well, the whole assembly sits on, I've actually used pipe grips very, very carefully. It's literally gone straight across, so the straight across where the nut is. You don't have to hold it terribly tight. It's just enough to, to get that nut undone and it's, it's loose. So yeah, that's another thing that might be useful. So stick my hand under there. somewhere you don't want them to but they are quite curly <laughs> and there we go oh there's a bit of tape on there look at that wow it's actually quite worn hmm. yeah part of me is actually quite tempted to repair the other drum And I'll put this one, oh, I don't know, the heads are good. And you can see there the, uh, the glue, the troublesome glue. Um, the other motor, actually, I'd, I'd cleaned all the glue off. But, uh, yeah, this one's not very happy. With that much glue on there, that's going to cause problems. Mm. Yes, okay, I'll, 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 I'll assess it, I'll take the other one out, and um, I think what I might end up doing is actually using the drum that's already in there, because that is, that is actually looking a better drum. Um, like I say, the heads are fairly young, although this has got quite a lot of wear, whereas the other one hasn't. Okay, I'm, I'm going to just repair the other one, I think. Um, so I'll just do the same process that I've just done on this one, and then we'll uh, change the caps and uh, the whole effect. Okay, so I've got the, the drum out of the other machine. Um, it's actually in much better condition. I mean, there is wear, but you know, they're pretty good. They're pretty good heads. And to be fair, they are tough old heads in these, um, these 950s. Um, I've seen them with incredibly worn drums, and they're still giving really good recording performance, even at Super Beta with the right tape. So, yeah, fair play. Um, so, um, I'm going to use this method with the grips. Um, I have to say, it is actually easy to do it out of the machine. Um, the only thing that can happen is... Uh, if it's really, really tight, you risk slipping an old drum flying across the room or something daft so that's really why i like to do it in the machine it's got nowhere to go really you're well away from any sort of potential head damaging so and i think i said about this in a previous video that the washer can stop it coming off the thread there we go the nut and washers are stuck to the magnet, which is fine. At least I know where they are. You then remove the 
obviously being careful where I put my fingers because I don't want to put them on the drum on the heads rather the drums fine the heads aren't um, more than likely you press in the wrong place and that's game over um, all I'm doing is there is a gap there's a little tiny gap 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 we can actually get the screwdriver under without fouling the board and without um, bending this and just give it a little twist and it just forces it up breaks the glue so undo this bit little cable management clip and there we go there it is in all its glory so you can see this was my issue it's not so much that the heads are bad bad it's just at some point there has been the most muckiest of tapes in here or several either that or it's never been serviced and there's just tape residue absolutely everywhere um so what i might end up doing is actually taking the heads off and giving them a good soak in a bath of isopropyl uh 99 and that will probably that will be enough but yeah i mean the heads themselves are actually really good so yeah, i don't know i think yeah i'm just going to keep on with this one change those caps change the whole effect see if it works if that solved the servo problems um maybe it is something more sinister with the the actual uh electronics themselves but i don't think so i think it's going to be something pretty daft and I, I could actually hear it hunting the other night in playback you could hear it sort of like almost ticking um so yeah i'm hoping this will do the trick so let's get the board or the boards separated There's quite a bit, a bit of flux here, so I'm hoping I don't have to add any more solder. Just being, being careful not to get too close to those coils. And while I'm about it, let's desolder the, the Hall Effect device. I actually did think I might have to add just a little bit of solder to that, but no, it's it's actually all right. And this solder mop's actually really, really good. It's quite laced with flux, so that's good. Take the board off. Sony's attention to detail there, they've got a little bit of uh, varnish to glue the screws just in case vi head vibration causes issues. Uh, not that there should be really any vibration. And uh, I suppose it's just being careful, isn't it? It's making sure that nothing can introduce any sort of element of. Um, unreliability. That's oh, probably going to be. There we go. And let's try and get the whole effect down. notice I don't know whether you can see that but um, the correct positioning is with the, the little round um, part facing up as you mount it I 
and providing the clue lets me get this out without breaking it, I'll save this one because it is actually okay. There we go. But I do actually have one or two to go out. <laughs> so I've got these and I've got another pack as well. So uh, I'm actually doing pretty well. So next thing is to clean all these bits of glue off as best I can. So I'll do that now and uh, we'll take it from there. So I've now cleaned that up and uh, I just used a, I had to squirt a tiny bit of isopropyl just on that uh, where the glue was, um, toothbrush to work it in and then used a very um, small flat blade uh, bit just to very gently scrape it away. There are actually little guides um, or a guide um, to help guide the, the, the wires of the, the sensor um, which ideally you don't want to knock off. So the next thing is to change these capacitors and um, these are one microfarad rated at 50 volts and these are 0.1 microfarad also rated at 50 volts so let's get those off One thing I like about Sony kit is they are very good at making absolutely sure you get them the right way around. So dot is negative. Um, in a lot of cases, I'll also put a plus for the positive, so you can't really go wrong. So I get this somewhere near. There we go. And we're small well faithful. It's quite different in size these. The the, the ones are actually um they sort of are about 10 years old and um, when are they? I mean, so I've put the caps on uh, you can see the, the difference between the older style and the, the newer style and uh, yeah all good to go with those um, now, the Hall Effect, um, what I try and do, what I used to do, was just splay the legs out so they fit through the holes and then bend it over actually in the assembly. But what I found is that it had a, a habit of, of sort of springing up. So what I'm going to try is actually, I've already bent the leads. And I want to make make it so it it actually mechanically presses down on this plastic. So with a little circular bit um, facing up. Let's just. Stagger these legs. So 
So hopefully they'll be somewhere near with a little bit of jiggling. We can get these in. That's perfect. Lovely. And that, that has, has actually that has actually located really well. So I should now be able to solder that. Super, that's nice. And that's sitting perfectly. You don't need any glue. It, it's fine. Um, you don't have to worry about adding any extra glue as, as long as it's mechanically flush with the plastic. That's not going to go anywhere. There is quite a bit of tolerance um, between the actual um, rotating magnet and the, the, the sensor anyway, so it's, it's absolutely fine. So, uh, yeah, now time to get it all put back together and give it a try. So there we go, that's looking pretty good. I'm really happy with that. I did actually test the capacitors that came out of here, and they're actually fine, um, which is a bit concerning. I'm just a bit worried that there might actually be another problem with this board. Um, but anyway, I'll refit it, and we'll, we'll test it. Okay, so now let's get this back together. So that goes that way. And I think those cables are supposed to go under there. And around there. Don't even get enough free. it shut. Let's 
just align that so I can get the other screw in. This is fairly straightforward, this bit. Make sure there's nothing else, just it's found its way onto that magnet. Oh, hang on a second, I've just spotted something. That washer is this washer. It goes in there. Same way we loosened it. Let's get those so it goes directly over straight across. Reduce the risk of slipping. So that's tight. And there we have it. That clean, but I'll probably do that once it's back in now. Most of the rubbish is off it. Super, so I'll get that put back in the machine. Well, that was a bit of an abrupt ending, but uh, it does seem a shame not to use the footage because there are a few useful tips and tricks in there. And uh, yeah, I did go on to do some more work on it, but uh, that will feature in another video. Um, trying to get that machine going so hope you enjoyed it and please like and subscribe and i will see you in another video bye for now